Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In this lecture, explanation and mathematical derivation of the field energy for the single excited systems will be provided in detail. Assume we have the following single excited electromechanical energy conversion device, which represent basic implementation of the relay device or system. As mentioned in previous lecture, the process of electromechanical energy conversion of this device can be summarized as follows. The input electrical power will be equal to mechanical power plus rate change in field energy. This equation of power flow can be expressed in differential form as follows. Basically, this equation represents the energy flow or energy balance. The mathematical approach that uses this equation can also be called the energy flow approach which we will be using through our lecture of the electromechanical energy conversion. This equation shows that a small increment or change in the input electrical energy is equal to small change in mechanical energy plus the rate change in the field energy or increase in stored energy. The mechanical energy or the change in the mechanical energy represents the important part or the output energy that goes to the load and produce the movement. However, we still need to understand and find mathematical expression for the field energy WF as it is related to the movement and can help in deriving the expression for the force and torque of the electromechanical energy conversion devices as we will see later. Basically, if we understand the field energy WF and the electrical energy WE, then we should be able to derive expression for the mechanical energy and specifically mechanical force or mechanical torque. To derive expression for the field energy for this relay system or any single excited electromechanical energy conversion device, we need to make two assumptions. First, we need to assume that the mechanical power or the change in the mechanical energy is equal to zero. This can be done by holding the moving part and prevent it from movement. The second assumption is neglecting the power loss. Now, if we apply a voltage V across the coil and a current I flow through the coil, all electrical energy will go toward the rate of change in the magnetic field energy because the mechanical power is zero. In other words, the change in electrical energy is equal to the change in the field energy as represented by the following expressions. Now, the change in electrical energy with respect to time dWe over dt represents the electrical power and it is equal to IV. Note that the input voltage is equal to back EMF E when the loss is neglected. Since we are talking about change of energy or power, we can substitute the applied voltage V by the known Faraday's law d psi over dt. Therefore, the change in electrical energy dWe will be equal to I d psi. Based on these two equations, we conclude that the field energy will be equal to dWf equal I d psi. Note that the change in electrical input energy dWe is always equal to I d psi. However, rate of change in field energy dWf is equal to I d psi only when the mechanical power is zero and there is no movement. You may have noticed that we avoided the substitution of the expression psi equal Li, which belongs to the linear magnetic systems during the derivation 
because we still need to keep these formulas more general for linear and nonlinear magnetic systems. As mentioned in a previous lecture, the psi i characteristic of any magnetic circuit such as the relay electromechanical system is depending on the air gap length and the magnetic material. Therefore, let's assume we have magnetic circuit characteristic with certain air gap length and magnetic material as shown. The change in the field energy dWF that we derived earlier can be represented graphically as a small element in the psi i curve as shown. The element dWF represents a small change in the field energy for a given current i. The total field energy WF for a certain value of magnetic field linkage psi1 can be identified by integrating the element i d psi from 0 to psi1 as shown. In other words, the shaded area between the curve and the psi axis represents the total field energy. Remember, the expression of the field energy has been identified under two assumptions. Mechanical power is zero and the power loss is zero. Also, this expression is general expression for the linear and nonlinear magnetic field systems. It is worth to know that the field energy value is usually calculated and decided during the design stage of the electromechanical energy conversion device or system. Up to now, we have explained graphically and mathematically the field energy WF. Now let's introduce one more term called co-energy. As you can see, the co-energy WF dash represents the area between the curve and the current axis I and can be calculated as follows. The co-energy does not have any physical significant or physical meaning. However, the co-energy can help mathematically in identifying the force and the torque of the electromechanical systems. In general, if the field energy WF or the co-energy WF dash is known, then we should be able to derive expressions for the mechanical force or mechanical torque as we will see later in the next lecture. It is very clear that in case of the nonlinear magnetic system, the co-energy WF dash is greater than the field energy WF. However, in case of the linear magnetic systems, the field energy WF is equal to the co-energy WF dash as shown in this figure. In general, if we add the field energy WF and the co-energy WF dash, the result will be equal to the full rectangular area I1 Psi1. It is very obvious that the formula of WF is very general expression. Therefore, let's apply this expression to our relay system shown in this figure to achieve new formula for the field energy WF in terms of the magnetic circuit quantities or variables. To do that, we need to find expressions for the current I and the small change in magnetic field linkage D psi in terms of magnetic circuit variables. The expression for the current I can be developed by applying Ampere's law to this specific relay magnetic circuit as shown. Now, to find expression for the deep psi, we can use the formula of psi equal to n phi and develop expression for deep psi as follows. Note that the number of turns n and the cross-section area A are constant for certain magnetic circuit. Also, Note that the total air gap length Lg is equal to Lg1 plus Lg2 and the magnetic core length Lc is equal to Lc1 plus Lc2. In addition, 
we will assume there is no fringing effect and therefore the cross section area of the core is equal to the cross section area of the air gap. Therefore, the magnetic field density of the air gap BG is equal to the core magnetic field density BC and they are equal to B. Now, if we substitute the developed current and deep psi expressions in the field energy WF equation and also perform some simplifications for the expressions, the following field energy expression can be achieved. This expression of the field energy has two terms. The first term represents the field energy of the air gap and the second term represents the field energy of the core magnetic material. Since the permeability of the core is much larger than the permeability of the air gap, also the air gap length is considered large in the relay system, therefore the field energy of the air gap will be much larger than the field energy of the core. Therefore, the field energy of the core can be neglected and the field energy will be equal to only the field energy of the air gap as follows. Neglecting the core field energy means that the field energy is mainly results from the contribution of the air gap field energy. Also means we are magnetically linearizing the magnetic circuit. In other words, the relay magnetic system is linear magnetic system. Now, since we already considering the relay system as a linear magnetic system, we can develop a formula for the field energy in terms of magnetic circuit inductance by using the linear magnetic field linkage formula of Psi equal Li as follows. As you can see, the field energy of the linear magnetic system is equal to 1 over 2 L of x i square. Note that the inductance is represented by L of x because the inductance is function to the air gap length x as we discussed in the previous lecture. Now let's repeat the same mathematical process using the co-energy expression. As you can see, the energy and the co-energy are equal and have same expression when the system is assumed to be linear magnetic system. Earlier we have developed the following expression for the field energy WF in terms of the magnetic circuit variables. This expression should be equal to 1 over 2 L I square and we can prove it as follows. These two equations are equal and developed from the general expression of the field energy and can be used for linear magnetic system only. Now, how about if we have nonlinear magnetic system? Basically, if we have nonlinear magnetic system, we should have nonlinear relationship between the current I and the magnetic field linkage psi. The following equation shows an example for a nonlinear magnetic relationship between the current I and the magnetic field linkage psi. Basically, if we want to calculate the field energy for this example, we can simply use the general formula of the field energy and just substitute the current expression of the nonlinear magnetic system in the field energy formula. We have proved earlier that the following two equations of the field energy are mathematically equal. Now let's see how we can understand these two equations. Let's start with the equation WF equal 1 over 2 L of X I square. This equation tell us that if the magnetic system operates at certain current I, the field energy will be large if the inductance is large. In other words, if the magnetic circuit has small air gap length, the inductance will be large 
and therefore the field energy will be large. Now, how about the equation WF equal B square over mu naught LGA? If we assume the cross-section area A is constant, the field energy will be large when the air gap length is small. In other words, when the air gap is small, the magnetic field density B square becomes large and therefore the field energy will be large. It is worth to mention again that during this lecture we have assumed that the mechanical power is zero because we hold the moving part. Therefore, all the change of electrical energy will be equal to the change of the field energy. In other words, all electrical energy will be converted as field energy. Note that this assumption is just used to identify the field energy formula. However, if we allow the moving part to be moved, the change in electrical energy will be equal to change in mechanical energy plus the increase or change in the field energy. In the upcoming lecture, we will use this relationship to identify the formula of the mechanical force and torque. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we'll continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I'm Ihsan al-Nabi and it was a pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.